Oh hi, my name is Brett and sometimes I wear a beret and on this channel I often give you guys a lot of advice when it comes to nerf stuff. Some of it is not so good, some of it is really bad. And uh, I'd like to take no responsibility for that because I'm reading it from other articles. But I felt it was appropriate timing to actually give you guys some thoughts on what I think is appropriate to better prepare yourself for nerf games, especially if you're someone who doesn't go to any or is looking to start going to some. So if you don't care about that, bye. And yes, uh, if you are just stumbling upon this, there are nerf games out there. They are fun and all ages can play. I am a nerd. Deal with it. But yes, my tips for nerf games. I thought really hard about this and I've decided that there were five distinct categories of what I kind of go through before I go to a game and they are all equally important. There's not a top five like preparations needed for a nerf game, but they are all five distinct categories that I think I go through and then am successful because I consider all of them. If you guys disagree by the end, let me know in the comments, but let's go through what I think some of those are, and then we'll give you some examples and um, yeah, how does that sound? Sounds good, okay. Number one, loadout. We'll start with the most obvious one. Number one is your loadout, of course. This is whatever you're using in a nerf game that probably makes it a nerf game officially because nerf blasters or various other brand blasters. Something that shoots foam darts or boom coast straws, you know, a plastic thing, what have you. It's kind of what defines the hobby. So yes, anything that you are really carrying around in your hands immediately to accomplish a mission of sorts. This is my rifle. There are many like it, but this one is mine. This was my loadout in this case. Bam. I can accomplish everything I've ever hoped and dreamed with that. Number two, gear. Gear is what I'd consider to be anything that's actually on you. So while your blaster is something that you're holding, or maybe you have a sidearm that you have on you, I'd still consider that part of your loadout. Your gear is most of the things that you are wearing, or it's also stuff that you are carrying with you, uh, or you bring with you. Maybe it's not something you're carrying the whole time, but it's meant to support you and your loadout in that sense. So food, water, I would consider those gear. A hat, good pants, good shoes, a shirt, nerfing shirt of course. Number three, location. This is where you are going to be playing. Number three, your location. Uh, very important to consider when you're prepping for a nerf game um, and things like the weather would come into effect uh, when you're looking at where you're going. Um, how is the ground? How is the sky? How is the wind? Is there a fire nearby? Is it raining? Is it snowing? Night is very different than day. You start prepping a lot more with your gear or your loadouts depending on what time of day it is. But yes, where you're going can make or break a game for sure and obviously you start tailoring a lot of what you bring depending on where you're going. But it also works in with uh, number four. Number four, the game. What always keeps this hobby interesting, number four, the games. What are we actually playing? So we have a location, but what are we playing there? Because the two of them work very close together, location and game, but obviously you can choose one that will not fit with the other one at all. And then if you choose the right thing for both, all well, can work perfectly. So the game could be humans versus zombies. It could just be player versus player, capture the flag team deathmatch. You've got your gear and your loadout, which make up you. And then you've got the location and the games, which make up where you're going to. So those are four very sensible preparations to make. So what's number five? It's kind of a, a, a big one that you might look over as well and you might think it's kind of silly, but I'd consider this one to be very important too. And without it, you can't really go to a game that you want to go to. Number five, you. All of these things being said, you could have the best loadout ever. You could be fully decked out in gear. You could go to the right spot on the right day, and you could be playing your favorite game ever. And if you're sick, I would highly recommend not going <laughs> because you are ultimately what makes or breaks the experience. And while some people might be geared to going to 
a Nerf game every week, or they might just be the kind of person who runs all day at a game. You can't assume that that's going to be you. We are playing outside, we are running around. I, I definitely get hurt at certain games because I'll trip over stuff and that's on me. But you need to make sure that you aren't doing that because you put yourself in a situation that you weren't prepared for. We'll start with something that I just went to back in January of this year. That was in Corvallis, Oregon, and it was an indoor library event. So the big consideration there first when I'm thinking about what I was going to, okay, it's an indoor library. We're not going to be running. Stock blasters only. The people I'm playing with are not super competitive, and this is fine, but important to consider. And I kind of had a rough idea of the games they'd be playing based off of a previous event I went to. So probably some HVZ, uh, capture the flag, and then the beginning they just start off with free for all and you just respawn here and there. So what do I, how do I prepare for that? Well, besides putting out a survey and having people choose my loadouts, I say, all right, indoors, so I'm just gonna wear some comfortable shoes. I don't need my regular game pants because I don't need to store a bunch of stuff in my pockets. I know there's gonna be a staging area, so I'll leave most of my other gear there, and there's a safe room, a safe room, there's a, a lock room where I can leave my valuables if I need to. Um, but I'm also just going to bring regular elite darts because it's just not necessary to bring my my good ammo And these are good quality elite darts, but they're they're still elite darts So I, I plan to bring low-level stuff unmodified to fit in with how all the other players will be I don't need to kind of dress super competitively or for any nasty outside elements because we're going to be inside so I have my blasters which I mean, could look like this. This is unmodded, totally fair. I have some magazines, um, even though I know it'd be totally acceptable to scavenge there because many darts come on the ground and being inside, you are very capable of scavenging. And then the gear I'm wearing is simple. The location, lit in certain areas, but dark in other areas means I prepped with some more lights just in case, but they also turn on the lights at the very end so we can collect darts. So how do I feel about this? because I could, I could go there, but I could go in with a completely different mentality and be like, gonna play hard, gonna win, no room for losers. And that would be wrong because this is just not the environment that that venue is offering or the people. Also, you probably shouldn't go in with that mentality anywhere. But I don't plan to do that. I'm going in to have fun doesn't matter if I get tagged out a bazillion times because I'm going to. But if you're just looking for a regular like outdoor game, that might not have been appropriate for you. So that's one example, if I explained it well. Let's think of about uh, another one that I have in my area regularly, our Fort Borst games, our outdoor games with the tall trees in the Pacific Northwest. It's going to be the end of February. There might be rain and there might be snow. So if it doesn't get canceled, I definitely have to look out for that, which means good shoes, probably my outdoor game pants. Uh, I'll wear layers, which means like long sleeves with some like short sleeve underneath, just so in case if I'm running around all day, I can take one off and still be comfortable because I will probably be running and then I'll get warm. Um, but I don't want to bring just one layer, uh, just one shirt because I'll soak through it because I get sweaty. Um, I'll, I'll bring my beret because you know, that's crucial. Uh, eye protection for sure. And that'll be, and then some good water um, and some snacks to hold me over until we have dinner afterwards. I'll bring a variety of blasters depending on how we set the games to be, but I'll bring a spectrum from, you know, some stock stuff to some slightly modded stuff to some probably higher power stuff, uh, just depending on the games that we get to. And then I'll bring a appropriate number of darts to kind of make all of those happen. Talking about the venue again, I know there are the tall trees, so good cover. Uh, but the ground, if it is wet, it will be muddy. So thinking back to my loadout again, or, or my, not my loadout, thinking back to my gear, definitely don't forget those shoes because otherwise I'm driving home with muddy shoes and that's why I usually bring a second pair of shoes to drive. Um, so that's the ground. Trees offer some good cover if it is just a light drizzle. So that's nice. Don't need like a rain jacket um, if I'm playing all day, but we'll see. And then the games themselves, 
we'll have some usual ones that we often throw on our agenda. So some will be more focused on just objectives uh, and others will be faster paced. So I'll have blasters that have a bunch of magazines ready to go, but then some other blasters that are scavenge friendly. And then just some pistols because pistols are always pretty safe uh, to use there. If I don't get enough sleep the night before, I should seriously consider whether or not I want to drive almost two hours to this event, because that's a safety risk to myself and other people. Might feel okay in the morning, but by the end of the day, driving back, possibly in the dark too, is not such a good idea. And this is why it is so important to kind of factor yourself in at the very end too, that number five. It does, again, sound a little bit weird, but I think it is definitely the most important thing because we'll get so wrapped up with, oh, I need to go to this game, prepping this, prepping this, I forgot mag holsters or mag holders and I'll start making them out of duct tape, blah, 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 and suddenly you realize it's three o'clock in the morning and you're leaving in like two hours. Oh, how long am I driving for? Oh, that's not good. And it's understandable if you have to skip a game just for your own safety and others' safety. Let me know what you think. Again, that's five points. That's your loadout, your gear, the location, the game itself, and then you. Those were the five things I would consider, the five check boxes I think I would check off before uh, going to a Nerf game or how you would prepare for a Nerf game. So if you stuck around this long, thank you very much. And hopefully you found this informative uh, if you haven't thought about it in this way already. Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you later.